Okay, so my rhythmic exercise suite, as it were. Um, I like to use Ableton for this. And again, this, this is uh, working towards the goal of improving our pocket playing. When I started doing this when I was around like 23, I got out of school, had all this vocabulary. I was playing, you know, lines and comping and tunes and all these different things, but I wasn't grooving. And if, if you're not grooving, it doesn't really matter. Everything else is moot. I mean, you have to develop those things too, but you know, at some point you need to also integrate the fact that you're grooving. And if you wanna be the dude that gets called all the time, uh, put this in your to-do list to work on your pocket playing. What I do is this, and I would just like put drums on. Let's just like find some drums first. All right. Ooh. I've used that break before. So I'm gonna start with like a, like hip hop tempo. Just like bring it down to like 98 or so. So first thing I'm gonna do is establish some simple chords to play, simple tempo, 4-4, four, four. gonna make everything easy so that I can just focus on grooving, specifically with the right hand, because I wanna, um, in this particular case, I'm gonna work on grooving with melodic lines. Uh, to do this, let's pick two chords. Let's, uh, let's have you guys pick them. Uh, Nicholas, can you pick two chords? Any two. G7 sus4, nice. A7 mate7. Ooh, that's a, that's a good answer. Okay, so, um, I like that a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a four note phrase. Again, here are the two chords are going from here to here. Right. And I'm gonna pick a four note phrase. So let's make it like a like a minor seven shape like this. These four notes. So then for an A5 major seven, you know, I could play that shape like you know, I could play it here, that'd be kind of Lydian. I could play it here, or I could play it here. So I'm just, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna establish four note phrase that I'm gonna play for each of these chords. So for A flat, I'm gonna establish that it'll be here like a C minor seven shape. And then for G seven, it'll be like an A minor seven shape. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a four note phrase in a bunch of different rhythms all the while playing over drums, recording myself, and you know, making sure that I'm grooving, like just really focusing on grooving. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna do a bar of each. So, a bar of this, and a bar of this. And now, playing just like that. Break, you know. 
they were simple and then they became like i started doing like some compound rhythms which is so useful if you know like some like compound rhythm stuff like that because you can do so much more with so much less like when i do like you know for example one two three four five six that's a seven note phrase but i'm only using like four notes to to create it and also the rhythm is interesting because it's it's kind of fast it's like implying high activity my hand is, st is static it's not really moving it's just like then also it's it's a it's not just sixteenth notes. There's some eighth note triplets in there as well, and it's also a polyrhythm because it's three over four. Deco deco do gada. That's three beats. Even though this isn't how jazz works, but you know it's like the standard. The default dang dang da dang dang da dang. Now swing and jazz is rarely actually triplets, but when it is, if you were to quantify that rhythm in terms of triplets, it would be three, two, and one, right? Three eighth note triplets followed by two eighth note triplets followed by one. One two three one two one one two three one two one one two three one two one one two three one two ding dang dang de dang dang ding one two three one two one one two three one two one one two three one two one one two three one. So for this rhythm I'm playing. What if we had that rhythm, but it was a sixteenth note subdivision? It would be one two three one two one 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 tack two tack two dang dang two dang dang two dang. Now that's a really common thing that people do, especially when you get to those fast rhythms, because then you can imply the smallest common denominator, right? The fastest subdivision, but playing way less notes. You know, dang dang to 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 dang which is so much better a lot of the time than just going like like no great jazz improvisers ever does that like it's very rarely there's got to be some sort of rhythmic breakup right like there's got to be some sort of like breakup in between these eighth note runs and then there's Clyde Stubblefield which is like there's this fill that I that he plays with James Brown all the time which is like which I love because it's uh it's six sixteenth notes so it's a value of six total the phrase it accentuates the e's and the uh a e and the e's and us as well so uh e
Ah, uh, shit. So, now by the way, most important part of the exercise, we gotta develop some self-awareness. All right, let's listen to it. See how he sounds. I'm sure at the beginning it wasn't too good. Let's see. So that first one, not the right swing feel. I want you to look at where the time is. You can literally see with these notches right here. Really on top, really back, and then look, settled in the middle and all three of these are about the same. And also you'll notice the swing feel. See, that's a little straight and there's some more swing here. So I'm taking a little while to warm up. And now we're, now we're coasting, right? Maybe these all sound good. I was talking while I was recording this too, so maybe some of these you can tell where I'm like, you know, just straight up like stopping. Right there, you know, like a little early there. I don't like that. Right here. Nope. But da 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 da. No. Fired. And you know, it's really important for this style of music to let the drums get there first. Not not always, but often. Not too much. You don't want to be too far behind. Just 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 this close. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know how much time that is. It's not a lot. Oh yeah, look at look at just right there. What unit of time is that? Yeah, probably about 10 milliseconds back, you know. <laughs> like, check it out. This is how I used to sound. You tend to like play like, you're because you're, you're trying so hard to play good time that you end up overcompensating and playing early. Like, but I think that's actually the misnomer that causes people to play that way when they start out. It's like, oh, I just gotta keep up. I just gotta keep up. I'm not good enough yet, which means I need to keep up. So it's maybe just a human thing of like, we tend to, when we first start out, overcompensate. That was definitely the case with me when I was learning this stuff. It's actually getting back to the first thing I was talking about with comping and developing hand independence. You've got your multiple parameters of complexity. You've got one knob that is like the tempo. You've got one knob as the chord changes. You've got another knob that is like, you know, how big of a phrase. Now there's that final knob of like, time feel. We want that knob to be a hundred. We want to be like just grooving our asses off. So that's why we want to simplify everything else and just be like, can I just develop time? Can I get it to where not only is my hand playing good time, but in my head, do I know what it actually sounds like in high definition? 